Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another chapter in our ongoing Vertical Measures webinar series. Uh, I'd first like to take a second and apologize for any technical difficulties you may have experienced. Uh, we, uh, we sent out a lot of emails. I'm sure you got them. Uh, so I'm glad that you're here now. And just know that we will send out uh, the slides and the recording tomorrow. So everything should be good from here on out. Uh, so back to webinar stuff. Um, I'd like to take a second to introduce myself. My name is Clark Kent, and I am the marketing coordinator here at The Daily Planet, and I'm going to be your webinar host for today's super webinar, The SEO Justice League, Five Pillars Worthy of a Great Search Strategy, and is hosted by the amazing Grant Simmons. Uh, Grant, when he's not protecting the streets of Gotham from Joker's thugs, leads the search marketing team at homes.com, helping drive traffic and brand visibility to one of the US's, US's top real estate sites. Grant has over 24 years of agency and brand experience serving industry leading organizations such as Paramount, Red Bull, M&M's, Mars, or M&M's, Mars, uh, Disney and Fox Sports. And he's also a crowd favorite at search and real estate industry events worldwide. Uh, but before we let Grant go into his uh, super webinar, uh, we have a few notes we want to go over real fast. Our most asked question we get every webinar is, will there be a recording available? Yes, we send out uh, the recording and grant slides. Uh, you'll get that email tomorrow morning, or you could find all of our previous webinars at verticalmeasures.com slash webinars. Uh, if any question comes to your head, uh, anything to do with Grant's presentation uh, during the webinar, please ask it in the chat. We will get to it at the Q&A at the end. Uh, and finally, we do have a quick survey at the end of the webinar when you log out. It's five questions. It's all multiple choice. It's super fast. We really appreciate it if you answer them. Uh, it's really helpful for uh, our team. So without further ado, I think we are ready for Grant to take over. Grant, are you there? I am. Thank all you right. very much indeed, Clark. Is that Thank your you. real name? <laughs> well, yeah, it is. <laughs> OK. Well, good Thanks, to know. That's all right. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, we have a lot to cover today. Um, I'm not going to hark on how great the Justice League movie is. I'm just going to tell you that uh, it inspired me and hopefully my presentation today would inspire you. Um, feel free to tweet any nuggets of information that you find enlightening, invigorating, inspiring or otherwise. Um, you can certainly have a look here and uh, at Simonet is my handle and SEO Justice League, I'm trying to get that hashtag trending. So uh, we'll probably knock lots of the politics off the top there. So anyway, so let's get started with the SEO Justice League, the five pillars worthy of a great search strategy. Yes, and you're here and I appreciate it. Thank you. And if you don't know Barry Allen, pretty cool with the flash. So let's talk about a great SEO strategy. It isn't the same for every client, definitely. We all know that and I'm assuming we have both uh, clients on board here, as well as the agencies that serve them, you know, but the villain is often the same, especially for a search strategy. Uh, if you know from the movie, this was Steppenwolf. I think we all have a common enemy and that would be the Google Wolf. Um, so we all tend to want to beat this enemy of ours, you know, even though we should be thinking about how we work alongside them, we do have to kind of outthink them most of the time. So although it isn't the same for every client, there are the key pillars that we need to include in every strategy to make it work and make it work well. So let's go. Let's get going with the SEO Justice League strategy. I've got a few quotes here throughout and I'm going to read them, not because I like to hear the sound of my own voice, but I think some of them are quite funny. Um, strong man is the strongest alone. You've never heard of that? No, that's not a saying. That's not even the opposite of what the saying is, because Batman is the leader. He kind of pulls everything together. Not only is he the leader, he leverages his utility bill and we should be leveraging SEO tools in the first pillar of the strategy we're going to do. So as, as Barry Allen asked him, what's your superpowers again? You know, he's rich. <laughs> and that's something that although some tools are pricey, they're often worth it. They often pay for themselves and the time we save. And I think that the first main pillar is to think about what tools we need and what we need those tools for. Uh, in the old days, it was basically just our brains. And now we have the luxury of uh, a lot of different choices when it comes to the tools we can use. Um, here at homes.com, we're using pretty much everything. We've tested pretty much everything else. So let's talk about the first bit of tools. What do we need them for? Site auditing. Site auditing is something that uh, most SEOs tend to have to do, whether it's starting off from scratch and, and just looking at 
a site you've never seen before with it. it's an ongoing client we want to make sure the work we do is effective and working so size does matter when it comes to site auditing tools selection small size sites i think you can just do manually anything below 100 pages takes a bit of time but it's worthwhile just taking a look at the pages individually when it comes to mid large sites in the hundreds to thousands variety um, they, they require tools that are really kind of more specialized and the massive sites i mean you know homes.com 100 plus million pages um, we need some enterprise tools that make sense it doesn't always make sense for everyone to use those high level tools but let's look at the right tools that we we are likely to use um, we tend to look at architecture so think content canonicals code schema stuff that's code level what we call techie stuff and then content, uh, the titles, meta description, structure of the page, internal links, what I call wordy stuff. So these are really the key components we look at. And then the competitive landscape and finally the links. So this is what we need the tools for. So when we look at the crawlers that are available in the market, the most popular one probably is Screaming Frog. And I hope everyone has heard of that and used it. It's a great tool. They just came out with a new version, I think yesterday or today. I haven't had a chance to dig into it, but my team says it's brilliant, especially the visualizations. And Cybol, relatively new kid on the block out of the UK, um, in case you're wondering, uh, my hometown. And uh, Cybol, the way I position these two is Screaming Frog is like Robin, a great resource to have alongside you. And Cybol is like Alfred, kind of tells you things that you didn't know and you should know. Um, the other one from an enterprise level, we also use Deep Crawl. Deep Crawl is a great tool as well. And I look at that as the Batmobile mainly because it can do everything like crash down walls, jump over large buildings and go underwater. So when we're looking at the tools that we should be using, um, depending on the size of your site, one of these is probably ideal. And I've got a few examples that we can look at. Uh, this is Sitebulb. Um, this is a crawl of one of my old sites that I had. Um, when you look at this, it gives you an understanding of what happened, a visual overview of site depth. Um, as far as page depth, uh, an overview of the different hints that it's suggesting or recommending. And the guy that runs this company, Patrick, is a pretty savvy SEO guy, also open to uh, sardonic comments on each new release, which is kind of humorous, uh, as well as listening to the search community to improve the tool over time. So this is one of the views you can get when you click on hints uh, specific to content. Just gives you an understanding of, of what each uh, element might be, the scope of it as far as how many pages, and then you can view and dig down. Um, so I really like this tool for the visual components of it. Sightbulb, great tool. What I really love about it, and I'm hoping that uh, Screaming Frog has just implemented something like this, is, is Sightbulb also gives you a visualization of the internal linking of the site. The bigger the dot, the more links it has going to it, and the less deep the page might be. So for example, if I you know, click on one of these dots, I get an understanding of what page is linked to it and also get an idea of the, the crawl depth. I get an idea of how many links internally go to it. The link equity score, which I just did rabbit ears and you can't see me do that, um, is really about if we assume that uh, the home page has a value of 100, for example, this is how it uh, essentially breaks down as you go through the site. So it's great to see how the flow of quote unquote link juice goes through the site. So it is awesome. I love Batman, I also love Cybulb. So that's my first little thing is, use the right tools for this crawling. And here's some other information as far as what I do look for. Page depth, so how far from the home page a page might be from a click standpoint. Duplicate content, it's always a challenge when you have a site that's over 100 pages. So make sure you don't have any duplicate content. Thin content, obviously with Panda being integrated into the main algorithm, you want to make sure that the duplicate, uh, the thin content rather, is minimized as much as you can. So add value to pages and indexation. You know, what pages are no index, what pages are indexed, what pages are in the sitemaps, lots of other elements we try to make sure that can easily be discovered. So I, I added in this bullet point, which is really other technical crap. So I think we all are a little bit technical. Um, but there is often some very technical stuff where we have developer SEOs or folks that are highly specialized from a forensic standpoint. Um, I dig into some of that. It might not always be your expertise, but you should understand what that other crap might be. So Google Search Console, the new GSC, it's getting better. It was updated this week um, with some new features and functionalities. 
the performance report in Google Search Console. And if you don't have Google Search Console already configured for your site, please run away, leave this webinar and go do that right now. I didn't see the numbers drop off. So I assume everyone has that installed. So the performance report is great. It's been, it's been updated. Queries devices, the pages, it's like the old report, just much cleaner, much better. The coverage report, the good, bad and ugly of, of where you have pages in the Google index, what they look like, how they see those pages, whether there's specific issues to, the, to that. It's a great report to dig in. The mobile usability, yes, it's very important. Everyone talks about this, but it's now integrated into Google Search Console. Your inspection tool, I love this. This gives you an URL level insight into what Google thinks of a specific page, whether it's choosing the right canonical tag for that page, whether it's selecting another one, gives you really good insight into the value of that page in Google's eyes and how, how it is and what it is in the index. And you can also submit that URL directly from that page. And then we also have the, uh, the menu actions, which is now integrated into the new Google Search Console, just to tell you what's good, what's bad, and what may be really ugly. The last thing is the internal links. I think this has been vastly improved. I'm not sure if the data itself has been significantly improved, but the visualization of it is much better. And so if we look at a couple of those areas, this is the coverage report, just to have an understanding of what is where, and it also gives you an understanding of the new menu on the left-hand side. As I say, if you haven't seen this, it was introduced this week. Um, and this, you'll see a couple of examples throughout um, the webinar of this, which is music genre list with one of my test sites. You get an understanding of what it sees. And this is how many pages have coverage. Uh, green is good, red is bad. And so this one is the coverage report. The next one is the link report. So you can see they've broken up much nicer so it all appears on one page easily around the internal links, the external links and top linking sites. This is also stuff that you can dig into the individual reports. But personally, I, I love the new layout. I think it's much clearer. It's much better to understand. And especially if you're sharing stuff with clients, it's pretty good. All right, so the right tools from a landscape standpoint, digging into the competitors, SEM Rush, it's another tool I love. Oh, and I said that slowly because it's a great tool. I've been using it for years, 10 year anniversary this year of that tool. I've been, been using it for about nine and a half. Spyfru is another old tool. I think is again a bit long in the tooth, but I also use that for some insights and the Google search results. Why not use from the horse's mouth information? So this is uh, within SEM Russia traffic analytics report. So this is available in certain levels of membership. Gives a really good understanding of what's happening with your site as far as the traffic overview, the sources of where the traffic is coming from. And you can dig down to that. Uh, it also includes geo if you're a multinational, um, where, where people are going to from your site and also the different subdomains you might have. This is great for, uh, for discovering the competition and also looking at your competition as far as where they're getting their traffic from, I find it's really useful. The other one is when you're looking at the landscape of competitors within the same report, you actually have an understanding of how you do from a uh, keyword standpoint against your competition. So Music Genre List does quite well uh, against these other four specific uh, competitors. And sometimes you don't even know these guys are competitors. These are competitors in the search results. And then you build from that, you can do a keyword gap analysis. I love this report as well. It gives you an idea of basically how many keywords you have and where the overlap is with different competitors. So that's great. When I look at this, I can see the rankings, different competitors, different key terms. I can also see how much overlap there is. Now, this report is great, but it doesn't give you the full scope of, of how well a site might be doing. Yes, it gives the overlap of where you guys are, but this next report gives an idea of the total number of organic keywords and the overlap that might be. So we're only tracking X amount of keywords. This gives a much better understanding of the keyword universe. So here, where every, every noise over here doesn't look like that much of a competitor, I can certainly dig into every noise and see how they're doing. So once again, SEM Rush, great tool for that. One of the other tools I obviously use, and I recommend everyone looks at this for at least uh, an hour a day, is the Google search for every or for a number of keywords that are important to you. So I, I do this where I look and I see what else has come on the page, what's new. Now there are some tools that scrape the Google SERP and certainly SEM Rush is one of them, Spyfru is one of them, but there's nothing better than getting your eyes on it, see what's coming up, what formats are in place. Um, it's really key where, when I look at this and you can see every noise is actually down here. 
So they're, they're obviously chomping at my heels right now. So that's from a standpoint of when we're looking at the competitive landscape. As far as measuring, we obviously have a whole suite of tools internally, but I think most companies can do really well. We're just looking at the Google tools, Google Analytics, make sure you set up conversion tracking and the Google Search Console, I say, keeps getting better. Definitely things that I would, I would say are important. So we've talked about Batman and the tools that are most important as one pillar. So when we're talking about the right tools, let's just go through a really high level. Batman's utility belt used to be made of sponges. Did you know that? It used to be household sponges that they just made. Things have evolved and certainly tools evolve over time. So find the best tools that work for you. They might change, but make sure that it has stuff that has some kind of API, some kind of export so you can transport the data or at least save the data. They will cost you money, so make sure you do have a budget from your boss. Or if you're a sole proprietor, put some money aside because the best ones tend to cost between $35 a month and $150 a month, maybe more. But make sure you have a budget. It makes my time much better when I'm doing projects. Test everything. Make sure most of these tools have a trial period. Test everything and measure everything often. Really, it's a key component of everything you do. Things are going to be changing. Make sure you change with them. And when we talk about change, let's get into Aquaman. What a dude. Um, so, so when I looked at Aquaman as being one of the main pillars, it's about adaptation. So I call that googly, and I'll tell you why in a sec. But really, one of the other pillars is being able to adapt and pivot and make sure that you understand that how Google is looking at you, not just from a standpoint in the SERP, but how they're looking at the future of search as well. So Aquaman said this in the final battle, uh, you really out your mind and then and Batman says, I'm not the one who bought Pitchfork. And that comes back to the right tools, but also comes back to adapting for the environment and adapting to what you, you're good at, which is after this webinar, uh, vanquishing Google. So um, how I define Googly, adapting to Google changes, mandates, arbitrary instructions and helpful information without panicking, knee-jerk reactions or curse words. Because at the end of the day, you can pivot every single day based on something that uh, John Muller or Gary Hill said, and they're both great guys with great information, but they're also not in, in the job. Their main job is to make sure that they communicate only what they can. And that doesn't include what the core algorithm actually is, but they're certainly great guys that deliver great information. So you don't want to react straight away. What you want to do is measure, monitor, see what you're doing, try and improve, look at your competition, and, and that's really what it comes down to being googly, that adaptation. So two things I'm asking you to align with today is not big news, but I think you should make sure if you're not aware of these things, that you, you must be aware of these things. And these are really simple, HTTPS. It's a basically secure protocol for the web. It's a Google initiative, a Google push. They warned in 2014 that it was gonna be a ranking signal and I believe it's only going to get stronger. Then they acted and actually added to a, uh, a browser a warning and it's going to get worse where they actually stop or block or give a much bigger warning. And an August 18 update was specifically around your money or your life queries. So anything to do with financial or health or anything that has a risk to it. We also talked about how we can create better trust, more trust in an actual website. And HTTPS is a factor of that. And Google Raters, Google Raters Dialing gives us whole information about what's important, what shouldn't be important, and what is great that Google search quality raters look at in sites. And if you go to go.homes forward slash QRG in basically capitals, you'll get a link to the quality raters guidelines, the most recent. Okay, mobile first. Wow, if you do not have a site that is mobile friendly, shame on you. But this is the big push of where Google is going. Everything is focused around mobile. And mobile is now, and it's more popular than desktop in most cases, not always. And what you've got to consider is, sometimes desktop can be a better conversion, depends on your actual business model. So from my perspective, we still get great conversion on desktop, we still focus on desktop, but we also have a lot of tools that measure our mobile effectiveness and efficiency. So don't forget, keep going. There is a mobile friendly testing tool accessible from Google Search Console. If you go into there, you can just click on that link as well. Uh, that basically can look at a single page or it can look at where the issues might be on your site. So make sure you have that stuff done. 
the mobile first index is something else that is also happening within uh, weeks for some people or already for others. The music genre list just got this notification this week. Uh, Google will not change over your site until it believes you're ready. So you'll get this thing that says, hey, we're going for the mobile index. That means take a second or third look at your mobile friendliness to make sure that everything is working and, and even go on it with your phone. I know that's so blase, but uh, look at everything on the device that you're targeting as well. There's best practices around the mobile first index on Google. Uh, Go.homes forward slash MFI. So take a look at that. You guys are going to be busy later on, I can tell. All right. So two things you should check out today, the HTTPS mobile first, make sure you're aligned with everything there. And two more things, because it's a buy one, get one off day today. Um, Try to look at Google's structured data testing tool. John Muller from Google said it gives the best insight into what your page will look like on a mobile device. Um, so go look at that and visit Think with Google. Um, that is where Google is going. Google is uh, essentially puts everything out there from its think tank, puts everything out there from its studies, um, you can see it's mobile, 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 and the preface is probably it's about mobile. So take a look at that. Brilliant. So that's my really summary of this. Be aware and adapt to Google's updates, not knee jerk, but just be aware of what's happening. Follow the trend to mobile, obviously. Keep testing on the device that you're targeting always. And I particularly like this scene as well. All right. So Bruce Wayne, he pulled out uh, uh, the Lasso of truth from under Aquaman's butt. And he says, that was beautiful. And so you say, what about this? You may have piranha, I know. But you're welcome to tell everyone about Think with Google. It's a great resource. Most importantly, and most importantly through all this SEO optimization as the Justice League dudes, you must look very cool doing it. Definitely. And you can't see me, but right now I look very cool doing this webinar. All right, let's move on to the flash. I love the Flash, love the TV program, love this character. So it's all about exceeding expectations. The expectations of users these days is speed. So let's talk about that. The Flash says in the movie, it's great. What is brunch? You wait in line for an hour, essentially lunch. I mean, I don't know, people are a little slow. That's all about perception. And it really comes down to perception of life on the internet. Have you ever seen this uh, meme? This is downloading the internet. <laughs> uh, 4,381 years to go. And this is sometimes what it feels like when you visit sites. I used to do a whole load of uh, auditing of mobile sites back in the day when it first was popular. And I really found out that uh, most people did not understand big businesses and small businesses, what mobile experience was really like. And speed is such a large component of that with faster phones, people paying a thousand bucks for a phone. Um, cough, not me. Yes, I do. Um, this is what it comes down to. Speed is perception. Speed actually influences the results that you will see on your site. The question I always get from my developers is, is, well, how fast is fast enough so we know we've succeeded? And this gives you an idea of one second delay in page load. All right. And you'll see that this slide is great. And I'm already bored and I've already left your site. All right. So. What does one, one second delay in page load mean? 7% less conversions, 11% fewer page views, 16 decrease in color satisfaction, and Google wants to satisfy users, and if you're not fast, you're not satisfying. So definitely these are great metrics, um, but basically faster is better, and keep iterating on the speed to get it better. So the right tools, we talk about that from Batman, but when we're looking at this, what are the tools I use? Uh, Dareboost, French company, uh, great insights into how fast a site is and what it looks like. Give you some examples. Sitebulb, the, the big, great crawler we already said about that I love, also has some great speed information. And Lighthouse is a Chrome plugin, which is free. It's great. It gives you insight, does so much more than that from an SEO standpoint. So let's look at uh, Dareboost. This is a basic overview of one page. So you look at one page, it gives you an understanding of where the challenges might be where you can improve, what you can improve. Um, first byte, start render fully loaded. First byte is when the first bit of information gets through to your browser. Start render is where you can first see something that appears on the page. Fully loaded is when everything is finished and you should be satisfied. So this is my old site, 1.1 seconds, great experience, great speed, all good. 
37 requests. When we dig in a little bit to this, we can see 37 requests. Where are those requests going to? How long do they take? Where's the blockers? Where's the time issues? So the first thing is similar.com. It gets the timings just to get that first back, 2.2. Two, three, one milliseconds. It's one of the slower components to before it starts to build. Just requires some script after that. Gives you great insight into what's happening. And there's other Chrome developer tools that also give this information. But I like Dareboost, just gives it really easy. Not only that, I can also look at further at these things from a simple standpoint. When you're trying to explain this to a developer, they're really, really smart. But when you want to hone in on, look, the DNS lookup is taking two, one milliseconds. The connecting the server is taking, I can do the math here, taking 130 milliseconds. How can we improve that? It gives a much better understanding the DOM loading is around the code. This is really great information. Not only this, <laughs> what I love about Dareboost, it gives you a video of your page loading. And that gives you the whole idea of what loads first. And remember, perception is key. If a user thinks there's information, great information appearing, then they're going to stick around. So the goal is to give the perception of speed by loading some elements really quickly and then loading the rest of the page later. So love Dare Boost. Uh, 120 bucks a month, great tool, site speed. Site bulb, we talked about. So site, site wide speed reporting. So rather than just go page by page, this gives you a breakdown of how fast different pages are. And then you can then deep dive into those different pages and get information on those pages. But to get a high level overview, great tool. If we don't want to pay for that, what about Google Analytics? Great as well. This gives you a breakdown of speed timings or page timings and speed suggestions. So if I go to the speed suggestions in the menu, it gives me an understanding of each different page. What might the suggestions be? I click on that and I get information by going to Google's page insights, page speed insights. And that gives me the breakdown of mobile and desktop and how to improve it as well. Sometimes getting information from Google is much better to communicate to developers what needs to be fixed and why, because Google says so. There you go. So speed is also that ranking factor we talked about. And, and with the uh, addition of the mobile first index, it's really important. Remember this scene? What a great scene. Pushes the sword back to Wonder Woman. Anyway, the bottom line on this is site speed is key. And Barry Allen says, it's speed force that caused him to burn a tremendous amount of calories. He's just a black hole of snacks. He's a snack hole. <laughs> Don't be a snack hole. <laughs> By that I mean, use the tools you have to improve the site speed. It's gonna make a difference across the board and it's only gonna improve over time. Lighthouse is great, excuse me. <coughs> Lighthouse is great, it's a Chrome plugin. You basically install it into the Chrome browser. You can then run a report on an individual page and it gives you a lot of information that you get in Dareboost. But I think Dareboost gives you a little bit more, but you're paying for that. This is free. And you can go there to download it, go to homes forward slash lighthouse. So the flash, it just pushes people and runs away. Sometimes we have challenges with influencing the people that actually do the work if we're not developers. How do we get them to do it? So push the developers to speed up. I always say that, but rather inspire your developers to speed up. Already mentioned showing the Google metrics that, that really matter <clears throat> and what Google says to improve. I say train them as well. So outside of all these pillars of how we can get a great strategy, one key element is help train your developers to understand why you're asking. So I only mentioned this uh, one time and then another few times because it's really important to get the developers on your site or to make sure the people that are implementing, whether it's clients, understand why you're asking. So it's a team effort. The platform needs to be solid. The code needs to be great. The design needs to be optimized. Um, it's always the age old problem of designers versus SEO folks. Um, get everyone on the same team. So quick recap, ah, quick recap. Uh, right tools, Lighthouse, Google Analytics, Dare Boost. Goal of always faster, don't rest. You can always iterate and improve and test as a user. Because this is based on perception, it's great to have the metrics, but always look at it on your phone. Have people outside of your immediate network as well, look at it on the phone. Sometimes there's network issues. And ask your product and development teams and your client to use it as well, because they have to understand when it's better or when it's not. Okay, we are jumping through this, brilliant. Let's go next.
our fourth pillar, cyborg, the Victor Stone. Remember, half man, half machine. And that's about technical SEO. I said before, not everyone can be a, uh, an absolute forensic technical SEO, but you can be a better SEO by understanding some of the technical stuff. I'm just going to go over a few things today. Uh, Cyborg, as they've just separated the mother cube from everything else, he says, I don't even understand how the physics of my toes hurt. And that is the challenge that most folks don't understand the physics and the efficacy of how their site, their website actually works. The key thing here is have a little bit of information that's really key to understand. The more you learn about technical SEO, the better SEO person you will be. So first thing, I'm talking about site killing issues here. Robot sex file. This is something that uh, search engines look at first before they look at your site, just to see what they should be looking at and what they shouldn't be looking at. So one of the biggest challenges I've always seen, whether it's using WordPress or another platform, is blocking the wrong resources. <clears throat> Making sure that Google can see JavaScript, if you have a JavaScript site, is key. But often folks or developers don't necessarily understand that and they've blocked it in their Google text, or Robo's text file. One of the other things is when you're developing a new site and just post launch, and I have done this with very large companies that have done a migration and then they have not removed the blocker from the robots text file. It looks like this. <clears throat> if you ever see this run, because <laughs> this means your site is not going to get indexed. Um, it is always going to be an issue, but it's also something to check every week. We have a robots text checker to just make sure everything it's copacetic, everything works. <clears throat> Just make sure you're not blocking the wrong things. Yeah, and, and I have seen this way too many times. One time is too much. If you see this at all or ever, if you're migrating your site, if you're changing site, if you're changing domain, make sure that's removed from your development site when you launch. Second thing, internal link issues. Now, this is a great uh, visual from SEMrush from a study they did. Internal linking, I think, is vastly undervalued. Um, it's something that is overall uh, site structure specific, but you want to make sure the right pages have the right internal link equity going to. Um, we often see this, and I'll just go through this directly quickly. Temporary redirects, a 302 redirect rather than 301 redirect. If something's moved, it's a 301. If something's moved just temporary, it's a 302. Quite simple, but often you've got to think ahead and say, is this page likely to come back? And if it's not likely to come back, you can 410 it, which means it's gone. Um, just using the right internal response codes is going to work great. Second thing, internal links are no follow. Sometimes it's on purpose, but just make sure it's not by accident. Broken internal links, there's no excuse for broken internal links, especially with blogs. You change something on your blog and suddenly everything breaks. Keep checking, keep calling your site and making sure the internal links are not broken. External links with no follow. That isn't, I think, uh, such a bad thing. Depends on the strategy there. The basis wants something else to check off. And too many on-page links. <clears throat> okay, the question I always get is, how many is too many on-page links? And I think that if the page is relatively light and the links make sense, you can have up to a thousand links. And that's probably a travesty that a thousand SEO people are gonna tell me I'm wrong. Um, I think that the general consensus is, in the old days, Google could not pass all the page. And by pass, I mean, look at and look at every single link on the page. There was limits. Um, as the crawlers have got better, ad websites have got more efficient, but Google can see more links on a page or more code on a page, and so more links can be surfaced. Now, you are spitting link equity on a page. Uh, there's that consideration, but if it makes sense, you can have more links on your page. Another thing, um, XML site errors, errors. So about four years ago, I was on stage in London um, giving a presentation at SMX with uh, Miley Oli from Google was on the stage with me. And we we're basically talking about some of the issues that really affected that people don't understand. I brought up XML sitemaps and afterwards she came up to me and said, that's great. No one thinks about that, but it's really some fundamental and foundational stuff that we look at. So XML sitemaps, always crawl your own XML sitemaps, whether you created them or not, it's automated. Make sure there is no formatting errors, i.e. the URLs are correct. The wrong pages in the sitemap, make sure the right pages are only pages that are linked within the site, that are pages that are not no index. These are all important stuff. Sitemap not found, make sure you have one. It's not necessarily really small sites, but John Miller recently said for large sites, it's something they really do look at. 
And sitemap not indicating robust text file, also not a big thing because generally if your sitemap is called XML sitemap.xml, they're going to find it in the root of your directory. But if it's called something like this is my sitemap XML, they might not find it. So putting a reference in the robots text file of where to find it is important and great and best practice. <clears throat> so these are the three things that I would say today, check, you know, go away and check right now would be robots text file. Just have a look at it. Make sure everything's okay. Internal link audit, do that as soon as you can. And call the XML site maps for errors. Just look at that, really important. And it's always you can use site bulb, screaming frog, or your brain if it's a small site and a big brain. So as Wonder Woman said, <clears throat> technology is like any other power without reason, without heart destroys us. I would say if you don't know technical SEO, um, you need to learn some of it, not completely, just enough that you can be not dangerous. And as Cyborg said when he takes over the Batmobile from Alfred, um, I'll take it from here. Uh, do I know you? Yes. If you aren't technical, be a little technical. All right, so learn some of that. Then we come on to, of course, Wonder Woman. So how do we deliver user experience satisfaction? All right, we could, you know, we could have different elements on the page, but you know, what content is great for boosting your sole authority, traffic and engagement? Well, it could be pictures of Wonder Woman, certainly, or it could be pictures of Aquaman. Both uh, attractive, and, and when I say attractive, I mean attractive for links. And attractive for users, as in people are liable to link to stuff that is cool. But I would have to say the questions are the answers. So when you're looking at the best content that engages, the best content for building authority, the best content for building traffic, it is about questions. And how do we build out questions that satisfy user queries? How do we make sure that content satisfies users? And this is really the goal when you look at Think with Google. When you look at all the Google um, Hangouts or anything else, they're constantly talking about how they can better satisfy the user's query. And they're going to be sending traffic and giving authority to the, to the sites that have the best answers. So this is one tool. Um, this is SEMrush again. Um, you can filter by question types. You can look for featured snippets. You can look for opportunities where you can answer questions better. I use these guys quite a lot. They also have a great new tool the topic research tool that actually gives you the questions, you know, is how, what, where, why, you can see over here. It gives you those questions. This is specific to real estate. It gives you topics uh, around creating content that makes sense. And you can also use this to drive your content strategy. It's a great tool. I recommend using that. One of the other tools uh, is obviously Google Search Console. Again, because it gives you queries and I go through there and I filter the queries that are already driving traffic, which means they already rank by what, how, who, where, um, and sometimes you know, how many, things like that that make sense in a query. Um, you can really get an understanding of where you are ranking, um, what is driving traffic, and how you can improve those pages to get more traffic or a featured snippet. Uh, next thing, uh, a lot of people have heard of this. There was a bit of a secret a few years ago, but Answer the Public, um, it's a cool tool. Um, a British company done a great job of pulling out questions around specific topics. And now there's a pro version that gives you a little bit more insight and to download, save stuff. Um, once again, really good for presenting to a client around what questions they should be answering. So good idea of how to drive a content strategy. Another cool tool um, is TwinWord. TwinWord also gives you intent-based um, suggestions around questions. Do, know, local and web and buy. These, these are great uh, intent-based focuses that Google looked at in their zero moment of truth a couple of years ago. So user intent, that's what Google's trying to satisfy as well. And then expensive, uh, it's 20 something bucks a month. Uh, but Sumo, uh, I, we use this for a lot of different things, uh, monitoring, tracking, um, but also it's great for finding keywords uh, and the question analyzer, relatively new, gives some great information around specific questions. Again, remember what we're trying to do is create this corpus of questions and then really hone in on what's right for the business, what's liable to cause uh, conversions, and then really uh, create great content around that to attract users, attract links, and attract search engines. So target questions the user asking, that's ob obvious. Make sure you have the answers. And this is really the high level overview. Research consolidates or aggregate everything together. 
group into topics that make sense and create content that answers those topics. Uh, decide on the best format. So is the best format to have it in a video, best format to have it in a list, a table, uh, best format to have it as an image, whatever that might be, decide the best format, create around that. So author the best answer, create the best answer, add some magic, I'll see what that is in a sec, <laughs> and promote, submit, you know, via search console, link to it from the inside of the site, really make it happen, maybe give it some visibility, give it a kick, and rinse and repeat what works and what doesn't, Every content is always good. So rinse and repeat means improve on the stuff that actually works, not the stuff that doesn't work. And then the magic is all about doing it better, different to satisfy the queries better. So when you do your analysis of the landscape and you see what's in the SERP, take those learnings, see what's working, see how you can improve it. That could be adding more words to an article. It could be adding a few more graphics. It could be make it into a tablet of form. It could be anything that gives the user more satisfaction quicker remember that mobile experience is important and I cannot lie that's the lasso of truth I were almost at the end of this and 41 minutes in I thank you so much so far for your attention and your cool questions that are just inundating me right now um, so let's recap the SEO Justice League find and use the right tools the Batman credo his value is superpowers being rich which means you must make sure you have a budget to afford some of these tools be googly and adapt make sure you understand where google is going to as the great wayne gretzky said and i have no clue about ice hockey but i know about quotes um skate to where the puck's going to be so when you're planning your strategy plan out a year in advance you don't know exactly what's going to happen but having the ability to plan ahead and adapt to what happens is going to be key Exceed speed expectations. Um, there is no such thing as too fast in serving stuff. And remember, it's all relative. If something is really interesting, like a video, people are willing to wait a little bit to see it, but you better satisfy them if you make them wait. And that's about the experience for bots, the same thing. Make sure you deliver something that is fast, that is easy to index, that is easy to understand, and allow search engines to uh, put you in the right topical relevance box and the last thing is satisfy user queries so find out the queries people are asking and make sure you satisfy them in the best way possible at least better than the other folks who you are competing with so that is the main premise of everything we've talked about so far so the five main pillars however unless you are the development team it's really tough to just go out and do this yourself. As I said before, work nicely with others, especially the guys that are gonna be implementing this for you or the guys you have to influence to, to put them inside or any other partners you might have. And this is the typical conversation uh, we have with development team when it comes to a project, you know. He agreed to fight with us, more or less, more, more, more or more or less, probably more or less. He said, no, he said, no. So <laughs> the challenge will always be, if you don't educate development team, product team into why, you're asking for something, then you probably won't get it all the time. But if you can show them and demonstrate what to do, why to do it, the outcome of what happens from doing it and why you need to iterate or do something else, it's gonna work much better for you. So be the SEO hero, defeat the Google wolf. Thank you. And that is the presentation. And I have any questions so far? <laughs> First of all, I really love that slide right before this with you as Superman. I think you tried to gloss over that a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I was hoping to slip through that one because I'm just a, a normal guy, Clark, as you yeah, can understand. Yeah, I don't remember Superman wearing a hat, but I think it looks good. <laughs> He's a man of many hats. <laughs> So awesome presentation. Uh, there's a lot of great takeaways. The one that I that stuck for me is don't be a snack hole. So I thought that was <laughs> that was really great. Um, okay, so let's get into the Q and A. Uh, we we have a few questions we can ask. Um, the first one is from uh, Samara, and she asks, "How do you sell the true value of SEO to clients?" It's a it's a great question, and uh, if they if they're not a client yet, then you have to base it on what you've done. And so for me, uh, in my agency days, and, and I spent uh, 17 years in agencies, <clears throat> you know, the way I looked at it is, uh, I am as good as my last project, 
and I am as good as how I position myself to help you, not how good I am, but how good I will be in helping you succeed. Because the biggest challenge I see with agencies these days, and we get a lot of pitches from agencies, it's all about how good they are. And it's how good they are going back years and the clients they, they, they have right now. For me, show me the last project. Show me the last project that you're still working on, the client is still engaged in, and see the, the improvements that we've seen in the, in the prior period that you're pitching to me. That is what it's all about. And it, and it really is, what have you done for me lately? Is what are you gonna get, do for me right away? And so when I had an agency, I used to show the value by giving them one thing, one thing that they could implement and see a, see a change, whether that is an improvement in rankings or a conversion improvement while they're considering hiring me. So from that standpoint, that's how I demonstrate value. I show the last project that I was, I was working on or still working on and tell them exactly how that's progressing with the permission of that client, obviously. And the second thing is I give them one, one brief nugget that is going to show them that I understand their business and to show them that I care about their business more than I care about mine. And that's really how, how I show that value. That's great. So the next few questions are, are kind of refreshers. So it should be easier for you to kind of to weigh in a little more on them. But the first one is from Billy. And he said, how can the mobile experience be made better for users? Sure. Well, <clears throat> there's two ways of looking at that. First is, number one, you use the Google tools, you use the other tools that say, is it the fastest experience possible? Are there problems with uh, the touch touch areas of the, of the page? You know, is it liable to be usable for users? These are all things you can get out of the Google tools or Dareboost or some other, other things that actually look at the, the page itself. Number two, and, and this I've, I, I've pitched for the last 10 years is eat your own dog food, which is get everyone internal to your, your organization to use the website on a mobile device. <laughs> and you would be surprised how amazingly the product people find it sucks, the developers find it slow, and the marketing people find it's not what they're pitching. And so from that standpoint, the best I think is to get real users using the, the mobile version of your site and to give feedback that you consolidate, aggregate, and actually use to build a better product. Okay, we got, uh, let's do two more questions. And this one's from Kate. And she said, uh, hi, what hi is Kate. The... <laughs> Hello, Kate. Uh, what's the first thing you should do when executing on a search plan? First thing I do is, is get the client to talk. Um, the issue that they tell you is never the issue they have. And so being the best listener is the best first thing you can do on any search plan. As we said at the beginning, every search strategy is different depending on the client. The one size fits all does not work. Although of course there's foundational, as we've said here, pillars that we should be looking at. Um, but the first thing I always say is listen. And that, and that goes beyond just having a questionnaire for our client. It comes down to physically getting on the phone and saying, Okay, what is the biggest challenge? And, and they're gonna say revenue or traffic. And you can say, okay, what's the really, where is that coming from? Is that a, an issue from a traffic standpoint, it's not going to the right pages, but really, really listen. And that's the first part of any strategy. The next thing, if we're talking about actual execution or tasks that we should do as an external company looking at a site, is obviously understand the competition, understand the competitive landscape. I, I, when I, when I had an agency, I had a lot of folks would come to me and say, we need to do better in search. And there'd be number two and number one would be Wikipedia or number, number one would be Microsoft. And I'm saying, look, you're not going to do much better probably unless you want to invest a, a crap ton of money, and that's a technical term, a crap ton of money in, in a strategy that's going to be far beyond just SEO. And so you've got to have an understanding of what's realistic because if you don't know what's realistic, you, you can't give the client the best advice. And you, sometimes the best advice for a client is, these are the expectations. So I think that's really the key thing right after you, you've talked to the client is really making sure that you've done from your standpoint, uh, a first pass from a competitive standpoint, whether that's on your own dime or whatever, to really make sure you understand the, the environment, the landscape and the opportunity. 
Okay, and our, our last question is a two-parter, and this one's for me. Uh, you spoke so highly of Aquaman that it made me curious, <laughs> who is your favorite superhero? And also, what superpower would you have if it's talking to fish? That's okay. Uh, you know what? Um, I think my, my girlfriend likes Aquaman the best. <laughs> so that's the only reason <laughs> I focused on him so much. But um, I, I think, well, when I really think of this, uh, and I had to think really carefully. Um, I think Superman, really. I mean, Superman, uh, and in the Justice League film, it's really important the way he says about, you know, the S on his body, the, on his, his emblem, stands for hope. You know, and the little kid says, but, you know, hope begins with H. And he goes, you know, hope is like car keys. You, you know you need them, but you never know where you're going to find them. <laughs> and, and so I think it's that kind of stuff is, you know, as an SEO guy, I think that being Superman and having that ability to be the center of the hurricane, to be that calming influence, to be the hope that we can Im we can improve someone's search visibility using the right strategy, the right tactics is really key. And if I wasn't Superman, the, the, the real um, superpower I would like is the ability to get eight hours sleep every night would be really good <laughs> as a superpower. And I, I sort of think that would be good for everything else in my life. But uh, yeah. I, uh, so probably those two things. Yeah, you know, I have a kid coming on, uh, coming up here. I'm gonna have a child in the next couple months, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wish for that superpower then as well. So <laughs> good luck. Good yeah, luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. All right. Well, Grant, I, that was a great answer. Uh, thanks for taking your time to come do a presentation for us. Um, it was really great. It was really entertaining. Uh, tune in next month in the same bat time, same bat station to hear our director of digital marketing education. Uh, Drew Eastmead, he'll be presenting on how to use subject uh, use a subject matter expert to find digital marketing success. Registration will be up early in October, so check back on our social channels or subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, until then, I'm Zach Jones from Vertical Measures. Have a super day, everyone. Thanks again, Grant. Thank you. No problem. Cheers, everyone.